Did I tell you that I wore this look a lot in my previous job? Made all the difference when someone came to discuss my decisions. I was like, really? Hi everyone and welcome back to Lina Libra Luca. Today is another skincare knowledge video, a follow-up to the skincare video I did about the difference between dry and dehydrated skin, which I will link up there, I guess. And yeah, I did another one following up this one, which talked about humectants, everything you need to get hydration into the skin, so make sure you record that, I'll be here waiting. Today we're talking about emollients versus occlusives, because both are in most moisturizers, both are needed for different kind of issues. And just as a short recap, our skin has barrier function, which keeps hydration inside. And this barrier is in the stratum corneum, and it's made up of dead keratinocytes and lipids that build, yeah, like a barrier, a brick. And when the lipids go away due to sun, harsh weather conditions, harsh cleansers, they're just you washed off, your skin's barrier gets holes and through these holes the water can evaporate which is called transepidermal water loss or TEWL. So you're aiming with your skincare to repair this barrier function and there are different ways to do it and that's where emollients and occlusives come into play. Emollients penetrate the skin, the upper layer, and fill the gaps the lipids left. Usually there are skin-like lipids like linoleic acid and these things and yeah they just slip in where the other lipid left and every, everyone's happy. Occlusives on the other hand don't penetrate into the upper layer of the skin, they stay on top of the skin and build a film. Just like putting plastic foil in there, they just seal the skin, the upper layer and prevent transepidermal water loss. Of course the difference between the two is no strict. You can't say, okay, this is an emollient and this is an occlusive and the emollient won't fall, stay on top of the skin and the occlusive won't penetrate. It's kind of in the flow. Some ingredients are more on the emollient side and others are more on the occlusive side. Common emollients contain ceramides, which you have of course heard of. Dr. Yard's cer ceramidine cream is the most famous. Cholesterol, which is bad if it's too high in your body, but you can't have enough of it in your skin. Fatty acids, linoleic acid, gamma linoleic acid, all these good things, and silicones. And I know some people tell you that silicones are the devil, but that's not true. I will film another follow-up video talking about the difference between silicones and other emollients because it would literally be too much to put into this video as well. The thing is when you apply emollients to your skin, that your skin needs a specific ratio. One to one to one. Cholesterol, ceramides and fatty acids. So the ideal cream would have one part ceramides, one part fatty acids and one part cholesterol. But once your skin's barrier is damaged, the needed ratio can differ. So you'll probably need two times the ceramides and no cholesterol, depending on what you lost. And that's where repairing your skin's barrier with creams is a little tricky because I can't tell what I have lost. I don't know, and I'll just tell you I don't know, maybe there are, but I don't know from any means to really see from the outside which kind you have lost. So I'm not sure these creams that claim to repair barrier function, which one of them will work best for you, because most likely as your skin is an individual, you'll need probably a different cream than I do because I lose my lipids probably from over exfoliating and you lost yours from having genetically dry skin. My advice here would be and just work your way through and see what benefits your skin the best, if it's more ceramides or if it's more fatty acids or just whatever. Some common occlusives contain beeswax, um, lanolin, olive or avocado oil, and petrolatum and mineral oil. And now before you scream and tell me that mineral oil is bad and petrolatum aka vaseline is the devil, um, 
that's not true either. In fact, petrolatum is the best occlusive you can get. But back to the occlusive function. They are supposed to put a layer on outside your skin to prevent epidermal, transepidermal water loss. Your skin has a natural occlusive. It's the sebum. I'm a really oily skin person, so I don't actually use occlusives. If I'm not, let's say, going on a skiing trip, I know I will be out in the snow and sun and harsh wind for hours without end. In my daily routine, I don't look for and I usually don't use occlusives because my skin produces its own. If your skin is dry, that's completely different. You may need, or you may need for the time being, something to protect your skin until it has repaired its barrier function. And the best occlusive you can get is petrolatum because it prevents transepidermal water loss up to 98%. 98%! All the others don't come close. And just to debunk another myth, the people telling you that petrolatum that it's not healthy and can lead to cancer, petrolatum or the mineral oil that you use in your skincare is cosmetic ingredient petrolatum or cosmetic ingredient mineral oil. And they go through several purification processes until they are allowed to be used in skincare. Question is, do you need 98% occlusion on your skin? I don't think that we should aim at 89% occlusion on our skin because skin doesn't need to breathe. Unless you're a frog or something like that, your skin isn't your means to transport oxygen into your body. You have your lungs for that. But you have sweats and you have pollution and everything that is underneath this layer will be trapped there and can't evaporate or can't, yeah, if you have to sweat, just get out. So I don't think that layering vaselina on top of my skin would be um, something that I'd aim for. I think if my skin was dry and severely dehydrated, I'd put a lot of humectants onto my skin, then layer emollients to repair my skin's barrier, and then follow up with a layer of occlusives just to seal everything in. But hey, lucky me, I get that oily that my skin occludes everything in on its own. So, bottom line, the difference between emollients and occlusives is where in the barrier function they actually work. The emollients will fill up the gaps, the occlusives are just like a quick fix and just seal everything in to prevent water loss if your skin is already really dehydrated. So each of them is sensible in your skincare depending on your needs and most of your moisturizers or night creams or day creams or serums will contain both. Rule of thumb is the more occlusives is in there, the heavier the cream will feel and the more it will sit on top. The more emollients there are, the better this cream will sink into your skin and I think the more comfortable it will be to wear. So I personally mature, oily skin that can get dehydrated. I use a ton of humectants. If I feel like I have upset my skin, which can happen quite a lot because I use retinols, I use acids. And yeah, I love skincare. Sometimes I just slather way too much onto my face. Then I'm looking for emollients, and if I know I'll be in harsh weather conditions, like hiking for a long time in the winter or something like that, I'll put a thick layer of occlusives on my skin just to seal my skin off. And that sums up the video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. Check out my blog where I yeah, write everything down for further reference. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the video silicones versus physiological lipids. And yeah, I'm going to see you all very soon with another video. Bye!